this is Pranessa, welcome back! Today we are going to see 10 quick tips and shortcuts you can use in Clip Studio Paint. I'm pretty sure you can translate this knowledge also in other softwares like Photoshop and Krita, so let's start! Tip number one, how to find a layer you have lost. Ever happened to you to accidentally draw in the wrong layer or having on screen a small smudge you can find in the massive amount of layers you have already created for your illustration? Well, this happens to me all the time. If you want to quickly find a guilty layer or layers, I'll show you now. You have to click on Operation in the toolbar, go in Subtool, Operation tab, you have to click on Select Layer, if you don't have Subtool Operation, you just have to go in Window and click on Subtool Operation. Then select on Canvas the area where is your incriminated mark. The software will identify for you the layer by highlighting it in your Layers tab. If you have drawn more than one thing in the area selected, Clip Studio will highlight it in blue all the layers underneath too. So if, for example, I click a larger area, it's going to select all the layers here. And now, once I selected my layer, I can grab the eraser tool or the lasso tool and delete my mistake. Bonus tip, how to set the shortcut. Go to File, Shortcut Settings, in Category, select Tools, Operation, under Operation click on Select Layer. I already have a shortcut here and it's D, but you can double click and insert your own personal command. Tip number two. Use your pen or brush as an eraser. Are you working on your sketch and you want to remove some lines with your brush instead of using an eraser, maybe because you want to keep the same texture in the area? By pressing the C key, you will swap between your main color and the transparency of the brush. This will work also with the fill bucket. Bonus tip, how to set the shortcut. You have to go in File, Shortcut Settings. In Category, you have to select Options. Down below, you will find Drawing Color. Here you have Switch Drawing Color and Transparent Color. Clip Studio already has a shortcut with C and I like it like it is. Tip number three, fill tool when the lines are not closed. This trick is very useful when you're doing a quick flat coloring and you want to do it as fast as possible, but sometimes your lines are not fully closed because it's still a sketch or your line art is imperfect. Without having to go in and fix your lines, you can change some options in the fill tool like this. Click on Fill Bucket on, a, on the toolbar, then in Subtool Fill, click on Refer Other Layers. Go in Tool Property Refer Other Layers, here be sure that the close gap is at max, the bar is all blue. Now you can do something like this and it's going to close automatically the gaps that you have in your line art. Listen, it's not perfect, but sometimes it's very useful and then you can go in and clean some, some things that you don't like. Bonus tip, area scaling. 
Another thing I like to tweak is area scaling so you can feel an area larger or smaller than the usual area. Very useful when you have texture line art that usually have a lot of blurry edges or gaps, like I have it here. If I'm going to make area scaling number higher than zero, it's going to go over the whole line. If I'm going to make the area scaling smaller than zero, it's going to be smaller than the area. Sometimes it can be useful to use it like this, and it's very fast. Tip number four, change paper color. It happens that my eyes are tired and I need to have a darker color on my screen instead of a white that to not, to not fatigue myself even more. To do so, you just have to go to edit, canvas properties, On paper color, click on the color box on the right. Choose the color you like, or by selecting pick screen color, you can go in the canvas and select the color that you like. Well, in this image it doesn't work that great, so we are going to go back to white. A faster way to do this process is to go on the layer tab and usually on the bottom of your layers you have a layer that is called paper. Double click on the white icon and you are going to open the same window from before. You no longer want the paper because you want to save it as a PNG with a transparent background. You can click on the eye symbol on the left of the paper layer. Or instead, you can go in Edit, Canvas Properties again, and uncheck Paper Color. Like this, you are going to completely remove the paper layer from the layer list. Tip number 5. How to color pick without having to switch tool. Being fast is very important when you're painting or drawing. Having to switch again and again between tools is very annoying sometimes, so that's why we have modify keys that temporarily modifies the normal action when pressing a key or multiple keys. So when you have selected a brush or any sort of painting tool, by pressing Alt you can temporarily activate the color picker. By keep pressing ALT and clicking with the left button of your mouse on the image, you can then select all the colors available on your canvas. See, my color wheel is going crazy right now. Once you have found the color needed, click on it, or if you were holding the left mouse button, just release it, and then release the ALT key, the one that allows you to use the color picking function and you are back automatically to the brush you were using and have the color selected as your primary color and you are ready to use it again. If you want to play around with the modifier keys you just have to go in File, Modifier Key Settings. There's something I've never done but if you can find something very interesting to use please just leave a comment down below. Some of these modifier keys are actually common in other drawing softwares and for example the old key function as color picking you can find it also in Photoshop or Krita so go play around with, with these other softwares too. Tip number 6. Auto register color palette. Super easy tip if you want to create a color palette ready to use for your character. Go in Color Set, if it's not there, go in Window again and check Color Set. Click on the wrench symbol next to the text box. Click on Create New Set. Rename as you like, Tutorial for me. Click on the three horizontal bars on the top left, here. Click on Auto register color in eyedropper 
and start building your color scheme by just clicking on your canvas. When you have selected all the colors you need, don't forget to uncheck the auto-register color palette function or you're going to accidentally add some colors that you maybe not need there. That, that's, that's something that I do a lot. <laughs> Bonus tip, quick color register. If you color pick your target color and go in an empty space by pressing Alt and clicking with the left mouse button, you will quickly register the color for a future use. So you just go in, click, press Alt here, and now you have a color register on your new set. Tip number seven. When you want to color pick from a reference, not in your canvas, but on your screen. This is so useful for me. Sometimes I just want to color pick something from the browser tab or an image I have on my screen, but not in Clip Studio. Before knowing this trick, I was screenshotting the image, copy on the canvas and color pick, but that's so long to do. So this is a special color picker you can use by going in Edit, Pick Screen Color. And now if I go into my browser, I can select the colors. It's very easy like this and you can actually quickly uh, select some color palette from another resource that is not in your Clip Studio file. Bonus tip, how to set the shortcut. Go in File, Shortcut Settings, in Category Menu Commons, Edit, scroll a little bit, pick screen color. And as always, double click on the right to personalize your comment. Super bonus tip! Do you want to add it on the top bar as I have it here? Right click on the common bar, click on common bar settings, edit, scroll a little bit again, and click on pick screen color and add on the right. Tip number eight. Quickly change the color of your layer. If I no longer want my shirt to be yellow, but instead to be pink, I can do it very quickly by just going in Edit, Convert to Drawing Color, and now it's pink. Bonus tip, how to set the shortcut. Go in File, Shortcut settings, in category select menu commands, it's already selected, go in edit, convert to drawing color. I've set it at one and it's very useful like this, I suggest you to do the same. Tip number nine, vector layers. So this should be a full video about vector layers because there is so many information that I want to share with you, but there are two awesome things that I recently discovered and I want to talk about today. First, let's create a vector layer. A quick recap if you don't know it, in your layer tab on the horizontal bar you can see three boxes here. The first one is to create a new raster layer, the second one is to create a new vector layer and the third one is to create a layer folder. If you create a vector layer you can easily modify the shapes and lines because the images are made from mathematical formulas while raster graphics is made by tiny pixels. 
You don't really have to know all the magic behind this process, but in my opinion it's useful knowledge to have, and so I share it with you. After this brief introduction, the first tip I want to share is how to use the vector eraser. It's important to be in a vector layer, as I already said. Click on Eraser. In the Subtool Eraser box you can find Vector Eraser. So when you are doing your line art in a vector layer, you can have three options to how to erase your mark. The first one is to erase the touched area only. So by doing like this, you are going to pretty much erase as you do in the rest of the layer. The second option is to erase up to intersection. It allows you to delete a line up to the point where it meets another line, or two lines. The third option is to erase the whole line. So yeah, you can delete the whole line that you drew before. This is very cool in my opinion, and uh, trust me, this will speed up a lot your process if you are deciding to do your line art in vector layers. The second and last tip I want to share with you about vectors is how to pinch a line. This is very useful when you want to correct a line that is not great, but you just want to correct it and not redraw it. So. On the left side, you go in Correct Line, you click on it. In the Sub Tool Correct Line, you click on Pinch Vector Line. And in Tool Property Pinch Vector Line, you are going to select the higher level of pinch level. So, for example, if you have a bigger level in the pinch level value, the whole line will bend like a wire, like this, and you can move the whole line together. But if you have a smaller value, it will pinch only small bits of the line, like this. And it's like pulling like a thread, basically. <laughs> I don't know why this happened, but yeah. <laughs> Tip number 10. Symmetrical rulers. Do you want to do some cool weapon designs for your D&D characters or you just want to create symmetrical stickers? Well, you need to know how to use symmetrical rulers first. Click on the right side on rulers. In the subtool ruler, click on symmetrical ruler, already selected. Now you can set the angle by dragging the mouse in the direction you like, or modify the angle manually and just click on the canvas. What? Your brush is not working? Wait! You have to open the subtool details by clicking on the wrench symbol here on the bottom right of tool property box of your brush. Then go into correction and enable snapping. And now it works. When you no longer need the ruler, you just have to right click on the layer and delete ruler. So how was it? Did you find these tips useful or you already knew all of them? Do you want me to go more in depth on some of those tips and or do you want to discover more about Clip Studio? Just let me know in the comments down below and subscribe to the channel and like the video. Alright, go to paint your beautiful ideas now. Until next time, bye bye!